Change. Scripture reading, Psalms chapter 34, beginning with the 15th verse, which reads thusly, The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hear it, and deliver them out of all of their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and say it such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. He keepeth all of his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. I read from the book of Psalms, chapter 34, verses 15 to 22. The Lord had a blessing to the reading of his word. Now in the hands of the music department, amen for her as she comes forth. Good evening, New Spring. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you feel like it, I'm going you to stand with me as I offer up praises unto God. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. He's yet worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. I love the Lord tonight. I love the Lord tonight. I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today, because you cared for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you, I lift you up, and I'll magnify your So why my heart is filled with praise Oh, I love you I love you I love you, Lord, today Oh, because you cared for me In such a special way And that's why I Jesus, 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 yeah, Lord, 
Chris been with us this evening. Um, one of the things I wanted to say before we started, um, Brother Thornton Upchurch, uh, he is um, in need of prayer. He's doing he's doing better. I believe he is in uh, DePaul Hospital. Uh, no visitors, but he is. Um, he is doing better. So I want to keep uh, Sister Upchurch, Brother Upchurch in our prayers. Amen. Of course, we're keeping Jake up in our, Jake Bradford in our prayers and Cecil Harris and the loss of his dear mother. So we are just continuing to pray. And then there, there are those who remember uh, they are just longtime friends of many of us. You all remember the Hutspits, um, Pam husband uh, she lost her dear husband Michael and um, I think he Michael passed on yesterday and so uh, two beautiful daughters so she is in in need of of prayer so keep Pam Pamela in your prayers and um, amen we're going to go back to uh, second Chronicles Second Chronicles, and we were talking about Jehoshaphat, and uh, Jehoshaphat, 
He follows uh, Asa, his father. Asa started good and ended up uh, a little twisted. And Asa is followed by Jehoshaphat. And I'm, I'm, I'd like to go through this uh, because I want to show a pattern and I want to get over um, a thought that is deeply embedded in the Bible, a, a reality, but it is not something we ever see because uh, we just can't see it. And it's certainly not something we ever hear. And, uh, and, and I, maybe we'll do our best to wrap this up because you know, y'all get tired when this stuff goes on too long, right? Um, but but it's, it's Bible study. And more and more, I'm seeing that the Bible has nothing, 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 nothing at all to do with religion. It is... Uh, it is a uh, it is a uh, collection that is uh, for the awakening of the species, and we can see how long uh, apparently that takes. Um, but all through the Bible is continued documentation to help us understand us and uh, and help us to try and help us to understand the concept of God, which, I, I, which apparently we are still quite a ways off from understanding that because we are covered with, um, with so much uh, self-centered teaching, teaching that is designed uh, to keep us underneath someone's foot, underneath someone's concept, underneath someone's thinking until we can't, fully uh, begin to understand, uh, you know, have a true understanding of God, what he means, how close he is to us. God is extremely close to us. He is not something that's out there yonder that you have to, you know, uh, try to come up with the right words to conjure him up out there. Jesus said it best, that people are going to tell you how far away God is and where you have to go and get him. He said, behold, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God is within you, right? Uh, that's why the Bible says the word, right? So that's the very spirit, the consciousness, the, the essence of God. The word is where? Nigh thee, even in your mouth. That's how close God is. That's why Jesus said, if you ask when you understand uh, um, who he is. You have to, I don't want to get too messed up, but you, you, you have to be careful of folk that give you these, um, and I can't say folk because it's doctrine, it's everywhere, where they, they, they'll give you a path that, that this is the way, and that path is often based upon letters. And I'll leave it at that. Now, the Bible clearly tells you, let me, let, me, let me show you this. Hold up here. Everybody all right? Hold up. Wait a minute. Um, Second Corinthians, real quick. Second Corinthians. The third chapter, and I'm, I'm going to read this back and forth. Um, this is, this is uh, really important. And 2 Corinthians, the third chapter. I'm going to, I'm going to, well, let's, let's start in the King James and then we'll go back and forth. I'm only going to read a few verses of this. Um, do we begin again to commend ourselves or need we, as some others, epistles 
of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you. And, and so the Message Bible says, does it sound like we're patting ourselves on the back and uh, insisting on our credentials, asserting our authority? Well, uh, we're not. Neither do we need letters of endorsement either to you or from you. And the second verse says, you yourselves are all the endorsement we need. Your very lives are, are the letter that anyone can read and uh, uh, can read just by looking at you. Uh, King James says, uh, ye are epistles written in our hearts, known and read of all men. He's, he's saying your lives is it. And then, for as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistles of Christ, uh, ministered by us, written not with ink, written not with what? With ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. Message Bible says, Christ himself wrote it, not with ink, but with God's living spirit, not chiseled into stone, but carved in human lives, and we published it. Fourth verse says, and such trust have we through Christ to God word. Um, Message Bible, same verse says, we, can, uh, uh, we couldn't be more sure of ourselves in this, that you, written by Christ, himself for God, uh, are letters of recommendation. Fifth verse says, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Now here's the verse that I want you to see. Uh, 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, sixth verse says, who also have made us able ministers of the New Testament. Now when it says the New Testament, it's not talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Right? Um, it says, not of the what? Not of the letter, but of the what? But of the spirit. So it, the New Testament is not of the letter. The New Testament is not something, this is, this is what, he, what he's talking about here. The New Testament is not something that someone wrote to you or for you. It says, who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. Why not of the letter? For the letter, what? Killeth. Doctrine kills. But the Spirit giveth life. So all these, okay, we got to stop there. Uh, yeah, we, so we're going we're gonna to stop there. But the reason this is important is because each new variation of a religion is based on new, doc, new doctrine. Someone doesn't agree with baptism. Someone doesn't agree with the Trinity. Someone believes in post-tribulation, mid-tribulation, pre-tribulation, right? See, all of these are, are, are just different doctrines that are all written, they're all letters. And then we kill each other because someone doesn't believe in your version of the letter. Are you with me? And so the Bible lets you know that the letter, all of the stuff you're writing down, this is all division and it kills because it's only based upon stuff, it's only based upon letters. And then you have people who are insisting that you're not calling the right name they're insisting that you're not calling the right name, but the name that they want you to call, one of the letters, the main letters in that name didn't even exist when the man was walking on the earth. Are you seeing this? They're saying that you're using, if you don't use that name, that you cannot be saved. But the name that is written, the letter, one of the main letters in that name, letter, did not exist when he, when he walked upon the earth. So at the time that they're telling you this is the name you must call, at the time he was walking on the earth, it wasn't even his name. 
And they tell you, you, ain't, you, you are not right if you don't call that name. When that wasn't even his name. But what are they, so what are, what are they going off of? A letter. If you don't call the name as they say you should call it, you ain't no good. And they will kill you over that letter. I'm, I'm just, I'm being honest with you. Like literally. It, many people have died over, over, the, over those letters. And that wasn't even his name. Why, is that, why, why, why even bring that up? Because it's telling you, for the letter killeth. People will kill you over doctrine. And they, they, they'll, they'll, they'll destroy your name because they ain't, they ain't gonna kill you physically. And they will excommunicate you. You're not allowed. And Lord knows. You, uh, uh, yeah, okay, come on. Let's go back. Um, Second Chronicles. Now, this is very important because... We're going to go back to 2 Chronicles, and we're going to go forward, but I want to, um, I want to show you a few things. 2 Chronicles, and last week, we finished at... We finished the 17th chapter. We went through that whole chapter and we, we, we showed how Jehoshaphat had peace because of, of his understanding of God. And, and his understanding of God is, is, is very detailed. I believe it's something, his understanding was, was so detailed to the point uh, it not only caused wars to cease, like there were no wars, but his enemies brought him gifts. Because, and he even had what we would call missionaries. And may I, may I explain something about missionaries? Why I don't, I don't, you know, I have this expectation that New Spring is going to have a this, this resurgence and we're, we're going to be able to do things that we've, you know, we've only hoped to do. But there's one thing that I would never do. I'll never support missionaries. <laughs> I'll never support a missionary. Can I explain why I'll never support missionaries? Because, because Jesus made a statement. He was talking about the, uh, the Pharisees. He said, you traverse land and sea. For one proselyte, right? That's one convert. And then he says, when that person is converted, they become twice the devil that you are. This is, this is what Christ said. Now, if you understand true, and forgive me if, I, if, if this is offensive, but you can, you, can, you can study this. If you understand the true spreading of the so-called gospel. If you, under, if, you, if you truly understand how that happens and what follows each time missionaries are sent overseas, and norm, right? So missionaries are sent overseas and they're normally sent by one of the dominant churches. This is, this is the original missionary work. They're, they're sent by one of the dominant churches and there's only really one dominant church all of us are offsprings of that original dominant church matter of fact uh, Mother Teresa was heavily studied and, and it, was, it was near the end of her life there was a guy and, and if I call his name you'll go look him up and, and find out he's an atheist and, and so you'll say he doesn't matter but what uh, uh, Karen Armstrong said is that atheism, they don't, they don't even have a right nor an understanding uh, uh, about rejecting God. Right? They don't, it's not God that they reject because they don't know anything about God. Not many of us do. What atheists reject are the so-called people who say they represent God. Because most atheists are looking at 
the dominant religion and how they move around the world. And whenever they go and send missionaries in, what follows after the missionary goes in and they, and, and they are, are going in to, you know, get the people to accept Christ, what follows are the priests. And what follows the priests are corporations. Because in order to get in, you have to, in order to, to get into the people, you must make them docile. You make them docile by softening them up with Jesus. And then you send in the priests, and the priests are connected to the corporations. And the corporations come in and raid the, raid the territory, raid the land. This is, this is worldwide for hundreds of years. Are you with me? Now, and so you, you always find this. Is, this, is, this, this always happens. Mother Teresa is known because of her so-called benevolence to the, the, the poor and the sick. Christopher Hitchens, uh, he, he did an expose, forgive me, but this is what he called it. He did an expose on Mother Teresa called the missionary position. This is what it was called. And, and so he detailed Mother Teresa, and they, 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 there were many, there were people who went in and interviewed at these, at these different homes that she had. They were some of, the, they were some of the, the filthiest places that these people had ever seen. These, these places that Mother Teresa had, they would not even give people uh, uh, pain, uh, uh, you know, help, help with the pain, pain medication. And, and, and the teaching was that you are suffering. Your suffering is beneficial because it helps Jesus and it helps God. You, you are helping God through your suffering. And they, 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 they had uh, medical personnel in these places that were given shots and all this stuff. And they would use the same needle for multiple people. Untrained. And finally, in an interview near the end of Mother Teresa's life, she said that her work was never for the benefit of the people. It was for the benefit of the church. Now, this is important because for us to roll into a, 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 a Christ which is a God-centered thinking, Right? This, is, this is what Christ told you that he was you. He said, the works that I do, you're going to be able to do these works and greater works than these shall ye do. Which meant that Christ was never trying to assert himself above you. He was with you. This is, this is why he came. Not so that you could see something you could never be and bow down and worship. He came to show you what you are. Doesn't yet appear what you shall be, right? But when you understand him and when, when the fullness of him is understood by you, then, then he, that's why the Bible calls him the first fruit of those who slept. First fruit. Why, why is it called first fruit? Because there's going to be what? Others just like it that follows. So when we go back to the Old Testament, and, and, and for example, Jehoshaphat, we, we just looked at Asa, and we saw that Asa started strong, and Asa, he, he, at the, by the time his life is over, he totally gives over to the concept that, that our, our uh, you know, anti-God, because there's only two things in the world. That's it, for humanity and against humanity. That's all there is. The Bible says, for God so loved the who? World. See, the, the whole concept of God is humanity. Right? A lawyer comes and asks Jesus, what, what, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus said, well, you know, the greatest commandment is that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then behind that is what? Love your neighbor as yourself. The only reason you have a concept of God is so that you can know how to treat people. So all of these people who have this, who have this, this, this God 
so that he can speak to them so that they can be over people. They're foolish, crazy, and idiots. Because if you use God to dominate people, you are anti-humanity. If you are anti-humanity, you are anti-God. He doesn't need you. will never use you. And we need to understand this. All right, everybody okay? I'm sorry, that's a bad rant. The reason this is important, let me show you this. Before, we're going we're gonna, to uh, glide through here. Second Chronicles 15. See, you're going you're gonna to keep falling down over people until you understand that there is not many people, if anybody, that has your best interest at heart. It's just, it's the way we're wired. The, the Bible says that the heart is, is messed up. Right? Your heart is messed up. Do you know there are people who will convince themselves that they are doing this for your benefit? I've been around them. They will convince themselves that they are doing this for your benefit. And, when you, and all you have to do is just listen to them long enough. And, and sure enough, the true purpose of what they're doing always comes out. Not sometimes. Always comes out. All right, now, now look at this. 2 Chronicles 15. We're going backwards. I'm only going backwards because I want, I want you to see this. 2 Chronicles 15, 2, it says, And he went to meet uh, Asa and, sa and said unto him, hear, hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while ye be with him. If ye seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. Just the way it is. And then it says, 2 Chronicles 15 and 3. Now, I'd like to ask if, don't ask that. Okay, 2 Chronicles 15, 3. Now, for a long season, how long? A long season. Israel have been what? Without the true God. How is that even possible? Well, if everyone is going along saying the same thing for three, four hundred years and nothing changes and everything keeps getting worse and you can't keep crooked people from the top, something is wrong. For, for a long season, Israel had been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without what? Law. Without law. Now, can I give you one of the greatest laws in all of the universe? Let me give it to you. I'm going to read it to you from the Bible. 2 Chronicles 19. 2 Chronicles 19. Um, and, and, yeah, 2 Chronicles 19, 7. It says, wherefore now let the fear of the Lord be where? Upon you. Take heed and do it. Right? That's, that's a true reverence where one understands natural law, all of these incredible things. He says, for there is what? No iniquity with the Lord our God. Now, here is one of the greatest laws in the world that will never be taught by the current world system. For there is no iniquity with the Lord our God. So if there is always iniquity in politics, in politics, there is always iniquity among us preachers. Always. Not sometimes. Always. But then it gives the greatest law ever. The greatest law in all of humanity. What does it say next? Nor respect of persons. Which means there is no one greater than you. From God's perspective. Now from this world system, yeah. Yeah, you get shot. No, seriously, you will get shot because in this world system, there will be, always will be people who dominate you. 
And those people will be protected at all costs, but not from. And so, for example, you have uh, people who say, oh, the Lord put Earl. Thank God the Lord made Earl president and he did not make uh, uh, Kurt president. See, it was the Lord that put up this president. And the, no, the Lord don't put up no president. I know, I know. Somebody don't like that. That's cool. That's cool. Can I prove to you the Lord don't put up no president? Because the Lord didn't put up no king. No king did the Lord. Oh, Tony, you, you, you crazy. See, the all flowed down on, on uh, King Saul and the oil flowed down on King David. That's proof that the Lord chose them. Okay, go back and read. I'll let you do it at your convenience. The Bible says that after Samuel anointed Saul, after he anointed Saul, he anointed Saul king. The same oil that flowed on Saul is the same oil that flowed on David. David wasn't wanted by God, neither was Solomon. Neither was Saul. Because after Samuel anointed Saul, he said, he told the people, you have done a great evil this day in, in, in asking for a king. You did a great evil. Because in taking the king, you leave natural law. Because the king will never allow you back to what you gave up. He ain't going to let you. He, you it, it, humanity, for humanity to get back to that is going to be one of the greatest wars ever. Because they'll never, they'll never allow it. You'll never get back. You will be worshiping at the feet of these presidents and kings until God changes and wakes us up. When you talk about the second coming of Christ, right? You know, some, somehow people think a little man is going to come from earth, I mean, from, from heaven and all of this. And, but when you talk about the second coming of Christ, you have to understand what Christ is. Christ is consciousness. When he came, the Bible says out of, I done blown it, I done messed the, the Bible study up. Uh, the Bible says out of Mary Magdalene, what? He cast seven devils. Devils is a consciousness. She had a perfect consciousness of this world. Couldn't begin to see what God had for her. Wasn't even possible. Then Jesus comes along and he, he, brings, he, he brings out of Mary Magdalene the consciousness of this world. For the God of this world hath blinded the minds of those. Are you seeing this? This is the consciousness that Christ dragged out of Mary. This is why she loved him so much. This is why when he died, she sat across from the sepulcher. He was dead, couldn't do anything for her, but she remembered how he changed her mind, changed her consciousness. And so when you talk about the second coming of Christ, you're talking about a universal consciousness where the world wakes up. This is something that only God can do. Now, I'm not saying that there ain't no little man coming because I don't want to mess y'all up. Right, now, um, so 2 Chronicles 19.7 says, Wherefore now let, uh, uh, let the fear of the Lord be upon you. See, the Old Testament gives you everything you need to know. If it didn't happen, in, if, it, if, if it didn't happen before, don't look for it again. It's telling us over and over again. Now, there's so much here. Wherefore, uh, now let the fear of the Lord be upon you, because uh, the Bible says there's no new thing under the sun. Take, take heed and do it, for there is no iniquity with the Lord our God, nor respect of persons, nor taking of gifts. All right, now, all right, uh, okay. Can we, can we resurrect this Bible study? Second Chronicles 17. No, we did that last week. Second Chronicles 18. I want, I want you to see something. Now, this is Jehoshaphat. And we're going to get through Jehoshaphat tonight uh, so we can, be, we can be done with this. Um, now, 
Here it says, now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance and joined affinity with Ahab. After certain years, he went down to Ahab, to, Sam to Samaria, and Ahab killed sheep and oxen for him in abundance and, and for the people that he had with him and persuaded him to go up with him to Ramoth Gilead. And Ahab, king of Israel, said unto, Jeho unto Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, two kings. Now, I want you to watch this, two kings. Wilt thou go with me to Ramoth Gilead? And he answered and said, I am as thou art, and my people as thy people, and we will be with thee where? In the war. Now, we just read that Jehoshaphat was so detailed with God that war escaped him and the people. What does he do? He gets rich. He has, he's filled with honor. Then he joins with his neighbor. Another king goes to his neighbor and his neighbor says, will you, will you be with me? And Jehoshaphat says, uh, I, am, I am as thou art, my people as thy people, and we will be with thee in the war. The very thing that God was saving him and his people from, he pursues war. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, inquire, I pray thee. Now listen, watch this. Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Therefore the king of Israel gathered together the prophets, 400 men, and said unto him, shall we go to, Rum, to, uh, to Rum of Gilead to battle? Shall we go to war or, or shall we not? And they said, go up, for, the, for God will deliver it into the king's hand. All right? He says, shall we go to war? He got his counselors together, and his counselor says, yes, sir, war it is. Don't believe me this, this is relevant? Turn on any of your news channels, and, and you will discover what each advisor thinks of war. Every last one of them believe in war. They don't care about the people. They, they don't care. They believe in war. And they say, now, I'm going to prove to you right now what God thinks of war. You can, go, you can go and look at anything you want to look at, talking about uh, uh, he was with Joshua, blah, blah. I'm going to show you exactly what God thinks of war. And it doesn't change, has not changed. That's why the Bible says that if you want to know about the coming, if you want to know about the end of the age, you, you, there shall be earthquakes in divers places, goes on and on, and there shall be wars and what? Rumors of wars, never going to stop because that's what we want. It's not what God wants. Who is God with in battle? Who is God with in war? Remember Joshua when he saw the man standing with the sword and he, he, Joshua asked him, he said, are you, are you for us or against us? And this is, this is an angel or a theophonic representation of God and he said, nay. I ain't with you or them. He said, I'm with God. Now, now watch this. And the Bible says, and Jehoshaphat, the sixth verse, but Jehoshaphat said, because all these men said, go up. And, the Bible, and then Jehoshaphat is looking around because Jehoshaphat, he ain't crazy. He knows that somebody here needs to have a direct line with God. And he's looking, he said, these cats can't have it. But Jehoshaphat said, is there not a prophet of the Lord besides. Now I, I see your boys. But is there a non-partisan individual that talks to God and ain't on your staff? <laughs> but Jehoshaphat said, is there not here a prophet of the Lord beside? Right? So if the president can call you up and you tell the president what he wants to hear, I mean, that's, that's, you, 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 you are partisan. You, you do whatever it takes to keep a job. Jehoshaphat said, I need somebody that ain't scared to get fired. Right? Because he works for God. 
that we might inquire of him. And the king of Israel said unto, Jehoshaph said unto Jehoshaphat, now he gives the clue here. There is yet how many? Just one man. Right? I, there's somebody I don't want to call him. By whom we may inquire of the Lord. There's only going to be a few. Sometime one at the most. But, but the king, Ahab said, there is someone I can call and he will tell us just what God said. He said, but I hate him. He said, the reason I hate him, now this is, this is a true politician, for he what? Never prophesied good unto me. Ooh. So the real God ain't got nothing good to say to these old crooked politicians. But always what? Evil. The same is Micaiah. All right? And, Jehoshaph and Jehoshaphat said, well, shoot, man. Uh, let not the king say so. And the king of Israel called for one of his officers and said, go fetch him. Go get him. Go get Micaiah. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, set either of them on his throne. Now, I want you to see here. Watch Jehoshaphat. Watch this. They each sat on his throne, clothed in their robes. When you're sitting on a throne, clothed in a robe, you are above people. And they sat in a void place at the entering in of the gate of Samaria, and all the, all the prophets prophesied before, the, before them. Everybody came and prophesied before them. And Zedekiah uh, had made him, this, this man even brought props. Right? He, I mean, he brought props. He, he, he knew he was going to be talking to the two kings tomorrow. So it says that he made horns of iron and said, thus said the Lord. This is what the Lord said. With, with these, with these horns of iron, thou shalt push Syria until they be consumed. Hasha. He brought props and said that God told me to show you this. He made horns of iron and said, with these horns, you're going to push Syria until they be consumed. And all the prophets prophesied, saying, go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper. For the Lord, what? Shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And the messenger that went to call Micaiah uh, spake unto him, saying, behold, the words of the prophet declare good to the king. All right? And they're all on one accord. He said, let thy word, therefore, I pray thee, be like one of theirs and speak thou good. Come on, man, get yourself together. Don't go up there talking crazy. Right? I mean, they're all saying that it's going to be all right. You don't have anything different to say, right? Micaiah said, dude, I'm with you, man. I got you. And Micaiah said, as the Lord liveth, even what my God said, that will I speak. And when he was come to the king, and the king said unto Micaiah, shall we go up to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And he said unto he said, go ye up and prosper, and they shall be delivered into your hand. Go on, king. You the man. <laughs> and the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou shalt say nothing but the truth to me in the name of the Lord? Ah, Micaiah said, Man, I was trying to get out of this. Then he said, Well, since you brought it up, I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let them return therefore every man to his house in what? In peace. God said, don't fight this war, people. This is your king's war and he gonna get all y'all killed. Are you with me? He said, you, they are scattered and God's gonna tell them, go home. Because you can't win this war. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I told you. I told you. He said, didn't I tell you? Did not I tell thee that he would not prophesy good unto me but evil? Again, he said, therefore, hear the word of the Lord. 
I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, who shall entice Ahab, the king of Israel? Uh, Micaiah said, you done started me up now. Now I got to tell you the rest of the story. I'm going to tell you what happened in the, in the heavens behind the scene. Look at this. So Micaiah said, listen, I saw, therefore, the 18th verse, therefore hear the word of the Lord. He said, I, I saw the Lord. See, you sitting on your throne, you and this old so-called other king, talking about how much he loved the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, who shall entice Ahab, the king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead. And one spake, saying after this manner, and another saying after that manner. Then there came out a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? What you going to do, Doc? And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, thou shalt entice him and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. And that's just what he did. All his prophets. He even told one prophet, make a horn of iron and take your props. And they all lied. So this is what happens when you tell the truth. Now there before, uh, now there, behold, the Lord had put lying spirit, put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets. Standing there right in the midst of all the prophets and called them all liars. And the Lord has spoken evil against thee. Then Zedekiah came near and smote Micaiah upon, slapped him. See, y'all thought that stuff of Will Smith was new. All right? he, he, he slapped him and said, keep, All right. and, and said, which way went the spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? And Micaiah said, behold, thou shalt see on that day when thou shalt go into the inner chamber to hide thyself. Then the king of Israel said, take ye Micaiah and carry him back to Ammon the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, thus said the king, put this fellow in prison and feed him with bread of affliction and with water of affliction until I return, how? In peace. Notice that Jehoshaphat does not step in. And Micaiah said, if thou certainly return in peace, then hath not the Lord spoken unto me. And he said, hearken all ye people. And you know what happened? They go out to battle. And Jehoshaphat has to pray because they're coming after him. The king tries to hide himself, gets struck with an arrow, fights the battle, but then he dies. The king dies. The Bible says in 33, and a certain man drew a bow at a venture and smote the king of Israel between the joints of his harness. Therefore he said to his chariot man, turn thine hand that thou mayest carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. And the battle increased that day, howbeit the king of Israel stayed himself upon his chariot against the, Syri against the Syrian even uh, uh, until the evening, about the time of the sun, the sun going down, and what? And he died. So Jehoshaphat has connected with the man, he sits and listens to a prophet from God tell him that this war is not right, don't go. You can go up if you want to, but you ain't gonna win. Jehoshaphat goes with him anyway, barely escapes with his life. The king that he goes to fight with dies. And so now Jehoshaphat comes back, creates reform in the, in the 19th verse, 19th chapter, it says, and, Jehosh and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, returned to his house in peace in Jerusalem, and Jehu, the seer went out to meet him and said uh, uh, to King Jehoshaphat, shouldest thou help the ungodly 
and love them that hate the Lord. Are you seeing this? Therefore is wrath upon thee from, the, uh, from before the Lord. Nevertheless, there, uh, uh, there are good things found in thee, in that, thou, that, in that that thou hast taken away a groves of the land and hath prepared the heart of uh, prepared thine heart to seek God. So anyway, he goes and and he tries to get himself together. Jehoshaphat. He and this is where we get where he sent judges. The fifth verse. He sent judges throughout all the fenced cities of Judah, city by city by city, and said to the judges, Take take heed what ye do, for uh, for ye judge not for man, but for the Lord. Who is with you in judgment? And then this is where we get this great verse, Second, Second Chronicles nineteen seven. Wherefore, now let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Take heed and do it, for there is no iniquity with the Lord our God, nor respect of persons, nor uh, taking of gifts. He said, "Now go out and be right. Don't let anybody bribe you. Do what's right." And um, and then we get to the 11th verse. We're going to get to the end of this because I want to, I want to finish about Jehoshaphat. And behold, um, uh, the chief priest is over you in all manner of the Lord. And so he's going to deal courageously at the end of the verse. The Lord shall be with you, uh, uh, shall be uh, with the good. God is only with the good. Now, we go to the 20th chapter. You can read this on your own. Jehoshaphat is uh, uh, the first verse says, and it came to pass after this also. So Jehoshaphat, he, he goes into war. The king is killed. He comes back home and he brings reform, bringing people close to God again. Then whenever you bring reform and you, you get close to God, this is what happens. Second uh, Chronicles 20 and 1, it says, and it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon um, and with them, other beside the, the, the uh, Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. So this was a battle that Jehoshaphat, and this is where we get the great verse that the battle is the Lord's. We get to uh, between um, the 24th verse on down, it talks about the Lord delivering Judah. Uh, let me see if I can find this real quick. Um, 2 Chronicles 2015. And he said, hearken ye. This is a man that gets anointed. Um, it says, uh, the end of the 14th verse, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. This is a Levite, the son of As uh, uh, Asaph. Um, he gets anointed and, and he speaks these words. Uh, 2 Chronicles 2015, and he said, Hearken ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. For what? For the battle is not whose? Yours, but God's. So this man speaks this, and of course, we get to the 24th verse, and, and when Judah came toward uh, the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, there were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. God came in, killed everybody. They didn't have to fight. Now, you would think that this is enough to convince you of the greatness of God. Now, I, I, I read all of this because I want you to see who you can trust when it comes to politicians, kings, and leaders. This is, a, this, this is a lesson that humanity, we, we're not able to learn now, but, but we, we must learn it. Now watch this. 2 Chronicles 20, 34, and the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of Jehu, the son of, uh, of Hanani, who is mentioned in the, in the book of the kings of Israel. Now watch this. And after this, now God showed up and showed himself strong to Jehoshaphat. As God did with Asa, as God did with David, as God did with Solomon, happens over and over again. Now watch this, 2 Chronicles 20, 35. And after this did Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, what did he do? Join himself with uh, uh, Ahaziah, king of Israel, who did what? Very wickedly. Isaiah was straight up jacked up. 
And Jehoshaphat liked him. And he joined himself with him to make ships to go to Tarshish. And they made the ships right there. And then 2037, it says, And Eliza prophesied against Jehoshaphat, saying, Because thou hast joined thyself to, ah to, Ahaz to Ahaziah, the Lord hath broken thy works. And the ships were broken that they were not able to go to Tarshish. So here we have Jehoshaphat and all that God had done. He joins himself to a wicked king and all of Jehoshaphat's works went down the drain because he joined with wickedness. All kings, they cannot help it because what they are is illegitimate. They can't help it. They all go that way. When Jesus was about to be crucified, the disciples, they began to talk among themselves because they wanted to know who was going to be Jesus Jr. Because Jesus was about to die. And which one of us is going to take his place? Which one of us is going to be the great leader? Y'all know the story. He told them, don't desire this. He said, the Gentiles like to elect people to rule and to lord over them. He said, don't let this be found among you. You don't need a leader. All you need is God. This is why the Bible talks about one of the greatest things that the world knows, and that is unity. Where there is unity, there is strength, because God is all in all. He's in all of us. He's not in one person to lead and direct the rest of us. He is in us. Because whenever these people that are so-called leaders mess up, what do we, what do we always got to do? Always got to try to rise and get ourselves together. The Bible is littered with proof that the greatest thing that humanity can ever do is to un... What does the Bible say? Where there are two or three what? Gathered together in who? Right? Does it say when two or three of y'all get together, select a leader, and that leader then comes and talks to me, and then I'm going to tell that leader what? No. He said where there are two or three gathered together in my name, he said, I'll be in the midst of them. I will be in the midst of them. This was the great, this was one of the greatest sins in all of the Bible when the people rejected God for man. How did Jesus die? He said, I'm going to release one unto you today. You choose. Do you want Jesus, which is God in the flesh, the great I am, the way, the truth, and the life, or do you want Barabbas? And what did the people say? Let his blood be on us and upon our children. Give us Barabbas. The greatest sin in all of humanity is when we select a man over God. The Bible said, curse is the man that would make what? Flesh his arm, which is his strength. I'm going to lean on this man. And you keep believing, you keep, we are some of the most, don't say that. <laughs> How do they convince us? How do they convince us that a crooked man is going to make it right? We couldn't wait to get rid of Trump. Then we got a, then we got a, a, a man that signed a crime bill to put more people in prison than any other person. And his son is weighing crack on video all over YouTube. But that was your savior. And then people are saying, well, let's get Trump back. Oh, okay, get the, yeah, yeah, get, get Trump back. Right, yeah, yeah, get, get the man to say, I grab him by the ponytail and, 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 and don't care about nobody but himself. This is, this is all of them. This ain't one of them, this is all of them. 
And the Bible is telling us over and over again that, Tony, you need to let these people go home. Let's stand. Let's go home. Everybody all right? Chris even started playing the piano. <laughs> like, man, I'm ready to go. Everybody all right? Apologize for these rants. But this is what Bible study is for. We're good. All right, let's bow our heads. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for being so good to us. You are that great God that we can trust and depend on as we leave this place. Never your presence be with us until we meet again. Let your heart say amen. Don't forget, keep brother up church in your prayer and, and, and uh, keep Pam in, in your prayer and, and just so many that, have, that are going through so much. You can see Martin before you leave. God bless you. See you on Sunday morning.